See you Saturday. You hang up and realize you have two days before the main family get-together of the year. Your shopping list is ready, so you head to the largest supermarket in town. You follow the list to the letter, grabbing everything you need as fast as possible. The cart is full of fruit, vegetables, dairy, meat, fish, bread. Well done, you. One hour later, you get back home and proudly hand in the shopping bags to your grandma. She takes out the items one by one and frowns more and more at each of them. Turns out the fish and meat you picked aren't fresh at all, and those bananas and greens won't make it till Saturday either. Grandma says she'll save the day. You make a good snack to not go shopping hungry. Now you won't buy the stuff you don't need. Then you get in the car together to do it all over again. Smart shopping means cruising the perimeter of the store where you can find all the fresh and healthy stuff. Fruits, vegetables, dairy, meat, and fish. They normally reserve the center aisles for junk food. So you decide to skip them altogether. Your first stop is the produce section. Grandma says you should spend the most time here. And it's a good thing you arrived before lunch. Most grocers get fresh produce when they just open or later in the evening before they close. You reach out for packaged tomatoes, but Grand stops you. Prepackaged fruit and vegetables are usually more expensive. Plus, they don't let you check each item. A good ripe tomato can weigh double as much as an unripe one. It should have smooth and firm skin and smell like a tomato. No! Don't put that poor bruise thing into your cart. Bruises on produce are a perfect breeding ground for bacteria. Try to find firm cucumbers that have no blemishes or soft spots. The best ones are dark green. If you see yellow spots, it means the thing is overly ripe and will likely taste odd. The same goes for peppers. They must be of intense color with no stains. Now turn it upside down and count the bumps. Four bumps means fewer seeds and better taste. Two to three bumps mean bitter taste. The stem of a fresh pepper is always green, firm, and crispy. Take these potatoes with sprouts out of your cart right now. Go for the firm and smooth ones, without the wrinkled skin, soft dark spots, or cuts. Pick only green lettuce with no holes or brown edges. The brighter its shade of green, the better. Moving on to fruits and berries, Gran explains that a ripe watermelon will come with a dry brown stem. This one with a dark yellow must have been resting on the ground long enough to get sweet. The same's true for melons. The ones with a yellowish bark is sweeter, as it had received enough sunlight by the time they picked it. Check out the stem of the bunch before taking those bananas home. The stem must be green to light yellow and not turning brown. Only take single bananas if you want to eat them right away. They survive longer in clusters. Never judge a mango by its color. Instead, gently squeeze it. A ripe mango will give in a bit, and it will also have a fruity aroma at the stem end. Smaller fruit is normally sweeter, but that rule doesn't work for strawberries. Different sorts come in different sizes, so bigger ones can be yummy too. Their ripening ends once they've been picked up, so go for bright red berries with fresh green leaves. Those would look dry and wilt if they had picked the berries a long time ago. That lemon won't give you much juice. It's pale, which means it's an older one. This firm, unblemished one with smooth skin will be way better. It also feels heavier. And that's a good sign as well. You're shopping for a big event, but otherwise, you'd never buy too much produce at a time. If it's fresh and organic, it won't naturally last too long. And always opt for fruits and veggies that are in season. They'll be less expensive and of better quality. Next stop, honey. This one looks odd to you as it has those crystals at the bottom of the jar. But Grandma explains it's a sign of freshness. It's normal for honey to crystallize when the temperature drops. It's also a good sign it looks opaque. It means it's more natural and healthy, and not pasteurized. You check the list and realize you still need some bread. You already know the best option is the whole grain kind. You pick it up and study the label. Made with whole grains won't do. This one that says whole wheat flour is good. The fewer ingredients, the better. If you can't pronounce the name of the additive, you don't want it in your bread. It shouldn't have artificial flavors, colors, or preservatives. You lightly press on the bread you just chose. Bingo! It goes back to its original shape, which means it's high quality. If you see your finger mark on it, it could have been previously frozen, or the baking process went wrong. You move towards the canned food section, and Gran jumps in your way. She's sure canned foods are bad for your health, as they contain a huge amount of sodium. 
you convince her to at least study the labels. You should always pick canned foods that don't have too much salt or sugar in them. The ones preserved in water or their own juice are the healthiest as they have fewer artificial ingredients in them. You find some tuna packed in olive oil. The package is perfectly closed, so it's all good. You know you should never take a rusty can. It can be dangerous. Okay, looks like you've got everything you need, except for meat and dairy. You know you should always grab those last. They can spoil without a fridge if shopping gets too long. You make some room in your shopping cart to protect your fruit from raw meat juice, just in case. Red meat should be of dark color. Purple, red, and brown are all good. Pork should be the shade of light blushing pink. It should smell good. It can't be pungent in any way. If you see many fibers, it must be some tough meat with a strong flavor. Beef tenderloin won't have any grains because it's super tender. White flecks and streaks of fat throughout the muscle are another sign it's juicy and tender. If you aren't planning to cook meat straight away, pick the one with the latest best before a date. You can still eat it safely after that date, but it tastes better before it. Dirty marks within the packaging are a red flag. Someone must have handled it with dirty hands. If the chicken you're about to buy has skin, it should be paler than the flesh, not yellow or light brown. The edges mustn't look dry. The cuts must be smooth and uniformly sized. If it's not butchered well, there might be small joints and bones in your lunch. Any chicken that has been in the container for more than two days should better stay on the shelf and not in your cart. Gran picks up a fish and stares it in the eye. She explains a good fish will have protruding ones with shiny black pupils. The skin of fresh fish should be silky, not sticky or dull. Squeeze the filet. If there's a trace of your finger mark on it, it's no good. The final stop of the day, dairy products. You should reach for the back of the shelf to find the ones with the most distant expiration date. The same rule works for frozen foods, packaged foods, and eggs. Stalkers locate the newer ones behind the older items. Grandma recommends choosing pasteurized milk. No raw products will land in your cart today. When milk goes through pasteurization, they heat it up to fight off disease-causing bacteria. It doesn't take away the nutritional value of the product, so no worries about that. When picking the best yogurt, pay attention to the label. The more words you see on it, the better. Three basic ingredients are enough to make it work. The rest should be preservatives and sugar you don't need. Live and active cultures is something you want to see on the ingredients list. Don't forget to get some cheese. Not this one, though. The soft kinds like ricotta, cream cheese, goat cheese, or shredded cheese shouldn't have any mold on them. It can penetrate inside easily. Some mold is fine on hard cheeses. You can carefully cut the area around it and still eat it. Yay! You're done with shopping. Time to go home and cook. From the iconic golden fries to a broken ice cream machine, here are 10 fast food secrets that the fast food industry doesn't really want you to know. Ah, chicken nuggets. Those golden crispy bites you can get from fast food chains. They're even on the menu of school lunches. What if I tell you that they aren't actually made entirely out of chicken? Researchers took chicken nugget samples from unnamed fast food chains and analyzed them. They said that one sample, for instance, contained only 40% and another 50% of meat. The rest? Well, you're eating mouthfuls of things like fat, connective tissue, and bone spicules. Many fast food companies grind the meat with that stuff. They make mechanically formed orbs of chicken parts. Why? Perhaps it's because this method is cheaper and more profitable. Millions of restaurants worldwide have chicken nuggets on their menu. So, scientifically, it's not fair to say all nuggets are made this way. But a lot of studies imply so. The more the meat is processed, the more you lose the good stuff, like vitamin B6 and B12. The bitter truth is that companies add stuff, such as sodium, to the mixed paste. Sodium is added to get a better flavor. It's one of the ingredients that makes nuggets so yummy. Our bodies need sodium, but not too much of it. Unfortunately, most junk food contains more than our bodies can handle. So it might be a safe option to avoid eating these sorts of foods frequently. Chains dip their nuggets into tempura batter and fry them in hydrogenated oil. That's also not a green light regarding health, but this is how they catch the golden tint. They put additional stuff in nuggets. What about grilled chicken? 
In recent years, we've seen brands highlighting grilled chicken as a healthier option. Research has been done about grilled chicken too. And the same approach is applied here. Take chicken samples from iconic fast food companies and send those to labs for analysis. The results show that companies are misleading people by advertising these products by labeling them as healthy, natural, and 100% chicken breast. In reality, a couple of things are added to the meat to make it tender and juicy. Plus, these additives make it easier to cook the meat, freeze, and transport it, and reheat it later without losing too much moisture. The drawback of all these additives is that they affect the nutritional value of the chicken breast. These ingredients aren't the healthiest for us. We should especially watch out for three things. The first one is again, sodium. Fast food samples had seven to 10 times more sodium than home cooked chicken breast. Imagine you have a cheeseburger, but you say no to yourself and try to pick a less harmful menu item. Yet, some chicken sandwiches have the same amount or even more sodium than a cheeseburger with medium fries. The second thing you need to watch out for is phosphate additives. These additives allow the protein to conjoin more water. This means the white meat in the sandwich will appear juicier to you. Any word you see in the ingredients section that contains FOS is a phosphate additive, so it's best to avoid them. The last thing you should avoid is sugars and starches, not just in grilled chicken, but pretty much in all fast food products. Oh, that's hard to digest, I admit. Cornstarch, sugar, malt, they come with grilled chicken breast buns, and even some fries have sugar too. Everywhere I look, it's sugar. You see, home-cooked chicken has zero grams of carbs, but the study samples had added sugar and up to 10% of the calories in the chicken breast comes from there. So what's the moral of this story? If you're a health-conscious diner, you should maybe go for other options. There are secret recipes from companies like KFC and Coca-Cola. No company wants to share the ingredients that make their food irresistible, but with a little research, you can decipher many things. You want to know the secret of McDonald's fries? It's written on their website. They add beef flavoring to the frying oil. This may sound weird, but apparently, that's a known practice amongst chefs and restaurants. Duck fat has also been used as a flavor, for example, in high-end restaurants. I'm a fries lover, so I added another fact about fries. Sadly, they're even saltier than you think. Experts suggest that a grown-up should consume at most 2,300 milligrams of sodium daily. Guess the McD's large fry sodium number. At least 400 milligrams. Classic fries from Burger King have 732 milligrams. And Five Guys take the level even higher with 962 milligrams of sodium. Next time, maybe you can ask workers to go easy on the salt as a solution. Picture this, you're in a hurry, but your tummy says, feed me or I'll affect your mood and make life miserable for you. For a quick snack, you enter a fast food chain restaurant. You order your favorite burger. It looks and smells as if it's just been taken from the grill and served. Nope, they have different types of grills designed for this that can cook meat super quickly. Sorry to bear the bad news, but those perfect grill marks on your burger aren't real tools. The factory adds them. If you want to know how clean an eatery is, look under the ice chute of the soda machine in places where you can get your own drink. There you go, inspector. You solved the case. Various studies say that if such machines aren't cleaned correctly, dirty, contaminated ice can lead to some health problems. There could be mold or bacteria there. Ew! The process of cleaning ice machines isn't easy. The same thing applies to ice cream machines, too. Rumor has it that those ice cream machines aren't out of order. Employers just cannot find time to clean them properly. Now, what's the best time to get a good and fresh meal? Here are two opinions, and they both have solid reasonings. The first team recommends avoiding ordering grilled food in chains from 7 to after midnight. Many former employees say that sometimes they had taquitos or hot dogs prepared at around 4 or 5 a.m., but kept waiting to serve them till around midnight. That's not healthy. The other team says you should order between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. or between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. to get the freshest meal. Since it's going to be around lunch and dinner time, there'll be circulation and you can get decent food. Fast food companies have marketing, design, and psychological tricks to lure you in and make you order. 
yet they don't want you to stay inside for too long. If you were dining in mood lighting, you know under dim lamps and candlelight, you would take your time to eat. As the name suggests, you should be fast like your food in chain restaurants. They have fluorescence and they're in full light. Similarly, the floors and tables have reflective surfaces that make food look nice and bright. Plus, music is usually fast and loud. It's done to prevent you from spending hours there. Yet, they want you to take advantage of the first 20 minutes after your purchase. The faster you eat, the longer it will take you to feel full. Scientists say it takes about 20 minutes for our stomachs to inform our brain, okay, now I'm full. It's a good idea to eat in a clean area, but most of these companies are using cleaning products that have super strong chemicals. Assume that the staff clean the place at the end of their shift. They wipe down the soda machine and grill surface, and then you showed up early the next day. You may get some of that chemical residue on your food compared to other customers visiting the place later in the day. The vegan patty may not be 100% vegan. I'm talking about the grill, not the meat itself. In most of the chains, vegan burgers are cooked on the same grill as meat burgers. Do you have fast food chain secrets you want to share? Tell them to fellow Brightsiders in the comments. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Is this safe to eat? We sometimes see strange dots on our potatoes and wonder if we should just throw them away. Here are 10 eat or toss facts. Did you know that every year, 119 billion pounds of food is wasted only in the United States? To put it in perspective, this number means nearly 40% of all food in America is wasted. People throw away food if they don't have confidence in the ingredients. They're being cautious and it makes sense, but what if the food is safe to eat and only looks weird? The first item on the list is beef. When it comes to meat, people naturally get extra cautious. Imagine you buy some raw beef in the store. Later on, you realize it's got some brown spots. If you toss it immediately, hear me out. This is normal. In fact, you can see brown layers also inside the beef. Bright red color equals fresh meat, huh? Not necessarily. When the meat is first cut, it's maroon. If the meat is quickly vacuum packaged, it will keep that shade. But if the meat is exposed to air for like 15 minutes, then oxygen will cause a change in the look to red. The redness can turn brown when the biochemical reaction starts. This can take a few hours. Workers at the grocery stores grind the meat several times a day to achieve that bright red color because they know consumers are cautious about maroon looking beef. If the beef is wrapped in an oxygen permeable plastic, it turns bright red after exposure to oxygen. As long as the meat smells and feels fresh, and if it's been stored properly, it should be safe to eat. Have you ever come across dark lines under a shrimp shell? This one has a similar story to beef. Black lines on your shrimp's flesh are related to a natural phenomenon. They gradually occur after shrimps are taken from the water. Meat is exposed to oxygen, and the blackness gets more visible over time. Here also, the pattern of the animal itself can be a factor. These black lines can be a naturally occurring discoloration on the shrimp. Think of cats. They also have different color patterns, but they're the same in terms of species. Next time, you can conduct a mini experiment in your kitchen. Put a couple of shrimps side by side and observe the mild differences in the shrimp's color patterns. Shrimp will have a distinct bad odor when it's no longer edible, so if it smells and tastes fresh, don't toss it. Should you eat moldy yogurt? That green substance on the surface doesn't look appealing at all. But if you scoop it out, you seem to have clean yogurt underneath. The short answer is toss it. The mold could be seen on the top only, but it has probably gone deep. Not to mention that it'll taste bad. Many molds are harmless, but some produce toxic substances. Green mold is a type of penicillium. Does this word sound familiar? That's the same type of mold used in the antibiotic penicillin. Don't get too excited. Eating moldy yogurt won't magically cure bacterial infections. It only spoils your dairy product. In 2013, there was an outbreak related to one line of yogurts. 
the company handed the products to stores as usual. After some time, they received customer complaints. They said that the yogurt looked like yogurt soup and tasted really old. Turns out that a type of fungus probably released some carbon dioxide. It made the product fizzy and bloating. Blech. The company and another independent scientist both said that this fungus in question wasn't usually harmful to people. Yet, more than 200 people reported becoming affected by it. So, these sorts of things can still happen. You should trust your spidey sense. If you've ever been lucky enough to see some mold in a freshly opened package, reach out to the manufacturer. You'll potentially save others from facing the same scenery by notifying the company about a systemic issue and preventing potential future product waste. Plus, the company probably wants to make amends and either reimburse your sad yogurt with a happy one, or better, they'll give you coupons for free products. Why do avocados sometimes have brown dots inside? Technically, it's edible, but you might not want to eat it. Avocados are a source of many vitamins like C, E, K, and B6, as well as healthy stuff like magnesium, potassium, and more. The avocado works hard to become such a health storage. Nutrients, water, and sugars wander around this fruit. Yes, technically, avocado is classified as a fruit. Anyway, avocados have their own transport channels, like veins. These channels are normally invisible to us. Until something goes out of the ordinary, the avocado may be stored in too cold temperatures for a longer time than it should. As a result, the tissue cells might be weakened and start to deteriorate. Experts say that after the fruit is harvested, if it stays in the refrigerator for a few weeks before you buy it, vascular browning can occur. This phenomenon becomes visible after you keep the avocado at room temperature for a few days. Don't be hard on yourself, it's not because of you. So should you eat it or toss it? You can eat the brown dotted avocados, but you may want to taste them first. They might not taste good compared to a regular one. What about the white area under the potato peel? Eat or toss? This area is also like dark bruise marks, but it's not black. If the outer layer of the potato looks normal, that odd looking white knot is not mold. The moldy potatoes deteriorate. They'll get softer, wrinkled, or squishy. As long as the exterior of this potato appears clean and regular, there's probably no harmful microbial growth inside of it. These strikingly white areas can be shaped due to potatoes being bruised, possibly in the field during the harvesting period. To sum up, you can eat it. There's also an issue of white smears coming out when we slice potatoes. You see the marks on the cutting board? Experts say that some potatoes have a higher level of water and starch content. As a result, your cutting board gets a bit messier than usual. No need to worry about it. I'm going to carry on with another form of potato. Not because I love every version of potato and I can eat it in all meals from breakfast to dinner, but because I want to know. What are those brown spots on potato chips? Should we eat or toss them? Consider these as minor imperfections. They don't affect the safety of the chip. They're there again because of the bruises they get or as a result of frying. Sometimes you see that your garlic is trying to make more garlic out of itself. Yep, it has sprouted. The question is, is it okay to eat sprouted cloves or should you toss them? If the green sprout is in the center of the garlic clove, that's fine. Be aware that the taste of the garlic will be stronger than it usually is. It will still be perfectly okay in a cooked meal since it'll be alongside other ingredients. The taste shouldn't be that harsh. Can we eat an apple with worms? Most people can't even stand the idea of accidentally eating an apple with a worm, but that's a cultural thing. So the answer is yes, we can eat it. After all, worms add a little protein to the fruit. These animals don't carry any harmful parasites. They make their way into the apple. The entrance point of the fruit might have an off flavor since it got sort of rotten in time. Besides the taste, the rotten part is all safe to bite. What might not be so safe is eating the fallen apples though. Those have probably been hanging out on the ground for quite some time. This period might be enough for the harmful bacteria from the soil to sneak into the apple. There were some cases where people experienced health issues by drinking unpasteurized apple juice made from dropped apples. Yeah, the ones that interact with unhealthy bacteria.
that's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.